On this day, I come to you from the empty sanctuary at Our Lord's Lutheran Church. This is Monday Thursday, the first of the three days at the heart of the year for us as Christians. I am sitting at the primary table around which our congregation normally gathers on Monday Thursday. Even in those years when we, when we share a fellowship meal, we often enter into this space to observe the stripping of the altar. And this altar is already stripped this evening. It looks very different than how it looks with the linens upon it, linens that symbolize the life and death of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And so as I sit at this table, I am thinking about tables, your tables. Many of you sat at a table in your own home earlier this evening, some of you by yourself, some of you with a partner or spouse. Some of you also had children at the table. So tonight I am thinking about your tables and I am thankful that you have invited me into your space through this video message. I'm also remembering some tables from my past. Growing up in our home, in the kitchen area, we had a white formica table with chrome trim. But when we had company, when we gathered people together for special meals, we moved to the formal dining room with my mother's much-loved French provincial furniture. When we went to our grandparents' homes, while they also had larger dining tables and separate rooms for guests, most of our time was spent at the tables that I associate my grandparents with. My one grandmother in her farmhouse had one of those big wood block tables, and it was always covered with an oilcloth tablecloth. And my other grandparents, they had a red formica oval table with all of its chrome trim. We shared many meals at those tables. And grandparents, as they often do, gave us children much advice as we were growing up. As I think of those tables tonight, I think about how food is integral to our lives. Without food, we cannot live. It's also true that without God, we cannot live, for God gives us the breath of life. God nurtures our spirits and sustains us in both good times and difficult times. Because food is so integral, I think that may be why in Jesus' day, covenants were sealed with a meal. At this communion table on this night, we as the church remember the meal that Jesus shared with his disciples, a meal that was a covenant meal where he gave his disciples a new covenant. It was a meal where he told them what he hoped for them. And Jesus also told them what he expected of them. It was a meal where he prayed for them and for us, the disciples of the future. And it was a meal where Jesus modeled what it means to serve others. Jesus had gathered them for that meal because it was a special time of year for his people, the Jewish people. It was the Passover. Last night, our Jewish friends began their Passover observance at tables in their homes. In a normal year, they would have had one or two other families join them at their tables in their homes. But in this year of COVID-19, each family must keep to themselves instead of sharing the table with friends and strangers. Even so, special foods were still eaten during a ritual dinner, which helps to retell the Exodus story. In Exodus, 
it says, God says through Moses to tell the people, this day shall be a day of remembrance for you. You shall celebrate it as a festival to the Lord. Throughout your generations, you shall observe it as a perpetual ordinance. And so the Jewish people of Jesus' day and of today remember and relive what the Lord has done for them. They tell the story of slavery in Egypt and through the foods on the table, they remember parts of what it meant to go through slavery and of the process toward freedom from that slavery. They remember. It has been said that there are two kinds of remembering. One kind remembers wounds in a way that feeds the desire to inflict wounds on others. The other kind remembers in order to seek healing and a life beyond the suffering and violence. I think the Passover meal is an example of a meal that seeks healing and life beyond the suffering and violence that had been experienced in the past. So tonight we remember we remember when God freed the Hebrew people from captivity as slaves in Egypt. We remember the festival of Passover when a meal full of symbolism was shared by God's people. We remember how Jesus shared that meal with his disciples before his impending arrest and condemnation. He shared it with them so that he could remember the freedom given in the Passover, that he could remember with his disciples how God had made the Hebrews a people, the people of Israel, and then called them to be a blessing to all other peoples of the earth. Tonight, we once again live into the new life given by Jesus. We do that by remembering when Jesus took the bread and cup of wine of Passover and declared that the bread was his body, that the wine was a new covenant in his blood. We remember that like the first disciples, when we are able to gather again, we will share bread and wine because Jesus has asked us to do this in remembrance of him. Tonight, we remember an old commandment that was given a new shape when Jesus took a towel and assumed the posture of a servant as he washed the soil-covered feet of his disciples. You see, everyone already knew that they were to love the Lord their God with all their heart and mind and strength and their neighbor as they loved their very own self. But now Jesus takes it further, much further, and commands his disciples to love one another as he has loved them. In John chapter 13, Jesus says, For I have set you an example that you also should do as I have done to you. Very truly, I tell you, servants are not greater than their master nor are messengers greater than the one who sent them. Jesus went on to say, I give you a new commandment, that you love one another. Just as I have loved you, you also should love one another. By this, everyone will know that you are my disciples if you have love for one another. Jesus has loved them by serving them. That night, with water and a towel, with bread and wine. But he has also served them during those years of teaching with compassion and by giving forgiveness. He has spent hours and days and months and years remembering with them the stories of their ancestors and how the form of those stories, the basic shape of those stories, is repeated over and over again in this world, this world we live in that is a world of suffering and violence. And Jesus knows 
that after his own suffering, after whatever violence is about to come his way, those who follow him will have to choose which kind of remembering they will do. And so Jesus models for them and for us God's life-giving way of remembering, a way that seeks healing and new life. When Jesus shared that meal and washed the feet, both the one who would betray him and the one who would deny him were present. When Jesus held up the cup and offered what is in it as the fluid of forgiveness, he wasn't talking to people with a short list of minor sins. He was talking to people who in the next few hours will turn him in and then who will scatter to the four winds at the first sign of trouble and one who will swear he never knew him. Jesus is talking to people who should have been his best friends, his very best friends on earth. But it turns out fear overrides all friendship and they flee. And so Jesus recognizes that as human beings, they will desire their own safety and Jesus is forgiving them ahead of time. As I thought about Jesus taking up the basin and the towel, I wondered what might we take up in this time? Perhaps one of the things we are taking up in order to love others is taking up the face mask and wearing it to protect others in case we are unwitting carriers of this coronavirus. One of the things we are taking up is physical distancing. And we do these things to serve each other. As I sit at this stripped altar, I realize that we as a community have been stripped of many things. The coronavirus has taken away the freedom to come and go as we please, to gather with friends and strangers, to shake hands and hug to gather around the meal our Lord Jesus provided for us. But I also realize that just as Jesus was not stripped of his sense of purpose, just as Jesus could not be stripped of his deep love for all of us as humans, there are things that can never be taken away from us. One of the things that can never be taken away is that we are God's beloved children. We have been adopted into the family through the life and death of Jesus our Lord. On this holy night, we remember. We remember who Jesus is at his core, and we remember who we are at our core. We are beloved children of God. And knowing that, we renew our covenant to follow Jesus through Good Friday, through Holy Saturday. We remember and trust that Easter is coming and that as the power of God is revealed in the days to come, we will love with a love more powerful than death. Please pray with me. God of the promise, on this holy night, we remember your great love that has broken into a world of suffering. Continue to walk with us through our suffering. Continue to walk with all those who are so scared as they fulfill essential positions in grocery stores and pharmacies and other places. Continue to be with all of the essential health care workers who are making such a difference for those who are sick. Grant them all your power. Grant them your strength and allow them to know that they are loved. Allow all of us to walk in your power on this holy night and in all the days to come. We ask this in the name of our Lord and healer, Jesus Christ. Amen.
Thank you for sharing Monday Thursday with me.